From update 12 it can be seen that the total rework of the coop canopy pushed the schedule back by several weeks, in part due to the harsh winter conditions that prevented work on the airframe. However, the downtime was not wasted, with the planned summer 2023 schedule for the rear fuselage Essential work was undertaken to ensure that the cockpit to fuselage and fuselage to tail sections would all match and be in the correct alignment. The connection form was being CNC'd and matched while the forward sections are still at the WFP workshop. Of particular importance is the rear fuselage to tail connection. The monocoque whirlwind fuselage construction has no integral bulkheads, the forward end skin being bolted direct to the outer flange of frame 10, while the rear is connected to the fin spar by a complex arrangement. The lower end of the fin plate spar consists of a large heavy casting. This casting performs several functions. It is the foundation for the connection angles on the spar, the main strength connector for the rear fuselage and the supporting structure for the retracting tailwheel mechanism. As with most aircraft, you cannot take a structural component in isolation. They normally work as an integral part of a larger structure. This aspect is a major challenge for the WFP. All this has to be considered into the economies of scale along with the available resources, timelines and finances. It therefore made economic sense while producing the patterns for the lower casting that the tailwheel strut casting patterns be made at the same time. The same rationale being for the castings themselves. There are six main casting groups required. Producing them at the same time ensured the maximum cost benefit. The retracting tailwheel is a large, heavy and very complex mechanism, consisting of an oleo strut housing a bearing tube that was fixed to the strut pivot casting. The bearing tube acting as the slideway for the upper locating casting that also holds the anchor fixing for the retracting jack. The lower fuselage casting carries both the fixed pivot tube and coaxial fixed cam tracks. The lower end of the upper locating casting holds the trunnion pins that run in the cam tracks to provide the rotation motion. The cam track plates themselves locate in the rotating hydraulic crosshead attached to the operating jack ram. The tailwheel mechanism required two hydraulic systems. The first system operating in the oleo strut itself consisted of a damped oil lower cylinder with an upper cylinder housing the high pressure air. On compression of the strut the oil forced a piston into the upper cylinder further raising the static pressure of 600 psi to over 1100 psi giving a total compressive force of over 6000 pounds. The oleo leg itself being able to rotate in the strut bearing tube to allow the tailwheel to caster for steerage when on the ground. The second system is part of the main aircraft system supplying a line pressure to the operating jack at 440 psi. With the aircraft on the ground the jack is in the fully extended position. This forces the locating casting via the trunnion pins up the vertical cam track. 
The top of the locating casting carries the locating spigot that locks the whole strut assembly to a bracket located on the fin spar. After takeoff, raising the undercarriage lever opens a valve to retract the jack. This pulls the locating casting down out of the bracket. At the bottom of the vertical track, the trunnion pins meet the curved track. As the jack continues to retract, forcing the trunnions around the track. With the cam tracks being fixed to the lower fuselage casting, the trunnions force the whole strut to rotate backwards around the pivot pin into the undercarriage bay. The fixed lower strut casting carries two angle brackets that attach to swivel rods connected to the bay doors. There is no mechanical lock provided for locating the strut in the raised position, just the line pressure for the jack, isolated by an instantaneous cut-off valve. While an ingenious system, it is very heavy and complex compared to the non-retracting tailwheels of its contemporaries. It was also greatly disliked by the ground crew. While the Oleo system could be serviced from outside the aircraft, servicing the operating jack required the removal of internal equipment to enable the smallest ground crew member access down the very narrow fuselage. From maintenance records, this does not appear to have been an infrequent requirement. The Whirlwind Fighter Project is a not-for-profit charity run by a group of dedicated volunteers. If you feel you could assist in recreating this iconic World War II fighter, please visit our Facebook and web pages. Any donations can be made through the Whirlwind Fighter Project's GoFundMe page. Also, please visit our active partner in the Whirlwind Fighter Project and future home of the Whirlwind, the Kent Battle of Britain Museum at Hawkinge. Many thanks.